and welcome to our latest Studio Lab uh, tutorial, which today we're going to be looking at our wood turning lathe to make a salt and pepper shakers. And we're going to then show you how to convert the lathe back into a jigsaw. And using the jigsaw, we're going to do a little stand that are going to hold the salt and pepper shakers in it. Equipment for today on the table in front of me, I have the usual two screwdrivers from our toolbox. I've got my chuck that's going to hold the salt and pepper blanks, my spanner. Uh, I don't need my center square. That was a mistake. We've got these two little uh, silver rods here, which are going to adjust our chuck. And we've got our wood turning tool, pencil and ruler various grades of sandpaper and later on after we've converted the machine we have a couple of sheets of our poplar wood here flat sheets which we're going to make our stand out of so first of all we've got our salt and pepper blanks these are supplied for you if you take our home study pack and if you come to our center here we'll obviously issue these for this project as well they come with a little cap in one end this little plastic cap we can just lever that out with our wood turning tool that pops straight out like so and this is the end that we're going to use to grip um, the uh, <coughs> blank piece of wood with our chuck okay the salt uh, and pepper blank, they're both the same at the moment because they've only got one hole in there. We take this now and we use our two steel pins from our toolbox and we open our chuck with these uh, holes on the outside. So we have turned to a position where you can get two holes together and by turning them in different directions you'll discover one direction makes the jaws close and the other direction makes the jaws open. So once I've figured out which way around that is, there it is, I can move my, my tool post is in the way here. So I'm just going to slide that back out of the way. I figured out that this direction is closing the jaws. So I can go ahead and do that and just grip that lightly for now. Not too heavy because I don't want those jaws denting the bottom of the wood. So what we do then is we make sure that our revolving uh, center, this block here, is pushed up and locates into the hole that is uh, already drilled on the wooden blank. So at the same time as pulling that in that direction, I then take my hexagon screwdriver and tighten up the little fixing on there. Just rotate it by hand, make sure uh, it's fairly tight. My tool post then, I'm going to undo and push up until it gives me a little gap almost touching the wood but not quite you want to rotate that by hand and make sure that's not going to get in the way so i've got here uh, two examples that i've made uh, you can see that i've chosen to do the salt and pepper differently uh, one shape for pepper one shape for salt uh, a, a nice little challenge you might want to set yourself is to try and get both of them identical and the only thing of course that distinguishes them from each other is the amount of holes in the top single hole for salt and several holes for pepper so these grooves and these indents and things you can see uh, have been made as the piece is turning on there i'm going to start at the top end up here which is going to be the the top surface of my shape again with our cutting tool two hands we never touch the wood without resting on the tool post this is rested nice and firm and i'm just going to go ahead now and start to do some shaping of my pepper i'm going to start with pepper first so on we go So what I felt straight away when I started to cut was a little bounce in the wood. You can feel it in your hands. This indicates that the wood is not running true. So what I've done is I've just done a centimeter there and you can see the difference if I show you with my pencil line. Here, the pencil line is continuous. That's the part that I've turned already. Here, the pencil line is broken. 
So I'm just going to rewind the step and the first thing I'm going to do is to get my piece of wood true all the way long. Just a, a, a safety note, if I go too far to the left with my tool post, I'm going to hit the jaws of the chuck. So I'm just going to stop short of that. In fact, I'm going to put a pencil line on there that indicates to me that that is the no-go area. I'm not going any further left than that. So let's get our piece of wood true to start with. There we are, nice and true all the way along. So now the wood is ready for me to do my shaping. So I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how to create one of these ridges on here. You can see how we've got these rounded ridges there. So the first step is to dig into the wood into uh, a gap between what you visualize to be two ridges. So if I visualize these to be two of the ridges on my design, I'm going to really dig in my cutting tool in between them both. Then I go back and I round off that ridge to, to my liking. So I'm going to start a plain area here so you can see exactly how that's done. So I've dug into the wood and that's left me quite a flat surface here, which is a little unsightly. So now I'm going to go back and I'm simply going to round off that area to make one of those circular ridges. doesn't take very much until it's done and now all three of my ridges are rounded off and remember I'm going to do a little bit more shaping later with sandpaper but for now the first cut of the shape uh, is uh, correct for me so now I'm going to on this area here I'm going to do myself a big scoop a big cut out now remember that going through our piece of wood we have a hole now that hole is parallel all the way down. You get an idea of the diameter of it when you look at your piece, when we issue you these blanks. And obviously that means that I've got to be a little sensitive to how far I dig in. I don't want to go too far because that's going to fracture the wood, that's going to break and I'll have to replace it with another piece. So be conscious of that hole as you're turning your piece of wood.
So my shaping is done. I've gone ahead and done some sanding of my piece. Um, I've folded my sandpaper very, very small. I've got different grades here uh, from coarse, medium to fine. Of course, I start with the roughest one first as the work is rotating. Smoothing out any grooves that might have been left from the cutting tool. Remembering I'm not going too close to those jaws. I'm going to then use the, the medium one to remove those marks from the coarse piece. And last of all, I'm going to use my fine paper. Getting to a stage where you're happy with the result. So the repeat then, you can set yourself a little challenge here and you can have this one removed from the machine. Just undo your uh, revolving center at the end. That pulls back. The jaws of the chuck then we open. You can place that one on the table in front of you and as you put your next piece of wood in here, this is now the uh, second one of that pair. Tighten it up exactly as we did earlier. Remove those steel pins. As I'm making this, as I'm turning here, I can see the other one in front of me so I know exactly where to put those grooves if I want to get a matching pair. Another trick you can do as well is you can simply offer it up like so and you can mark the positions where you're going to dig in with the cutting tool. These are the positions where my tool is going to make contact and they are the center of each of those little grooves there. So you've got a very good chance of repeating that one identically if it's in line and sitting on the table there. Remember as we're going in, don't go too thin and fracture the wall of your blank piece because we have a hole going through the center. So we're going to skip forward and leave you to do your own second piece and we're going to show you now how to convert our machine from a lathe back to a jigsaw and we're going to design and make a little stand for the finished pieces. So we're about to remove our blank uh, piece of wood. You're going to be removing your finished shape, either your salt or your paper, pepper. And we're going to convert the machine back into a jigsaw to start to plan and cut out our stand. Two extra pieces of equipment I've got on the table here. It is possible to remove the motor of your machine and in your little kit, you can find the fixtures to turn your motor into a handheld drill. We're going to use that when we finish to drill the extra holes to indicate which is our pepper. Um, and then the glue gun we're going to use to assemble the parts uh, for our stand that we're, we're about to make. So two extra pieces that you're going to need there. You're going to use the, the motor off your machine. I've just uh, got an extra one here to show you how that works. So converting the machine, first of all, our little hexagon spanner, we're going to remove our tail stock or our revolving center. We don't need that anymore. That comes away. We're going to remove our finished piece of wood. In your case, you've made a, a salt or a pepper. This has to come out. Goes to one side, pins come out. The chuck then is going to come off, so we're going to use our thin hexagon spanner to go in through the hole on the left-hand side of the machine, make sure it's pulled down, and you should just be able to lever that with your hand and the chuck can undo. That's placed out the way, we don't want that anymore. And now we're exposed with the, the thread end of the machine, we need the following components. First of all, we need a brass collet. Remembering that it's the size uh, that suits the objects it's about to hold. And for us, for our saw, we need this little cam fixture. That's also in your toolbox of the home study kit. The collet goes in first. The little black nut that holds it in place goes over the collet. Line up the thread. And then the revolving cam goes in there. And as I'm tightening that up, I make sure there's no gap between the black uh, nut and the collet, uh, sorry, and the cam fixture itself. Get it finger tight, and then you can take your spanner, 
onto the two flat parts here and just give that a final tighten using your screwdriver as a lever. So that's all ready to receive our saw fixture now. Get a bit of my saw just out of the way. The saw table, remembering that the hole in the saw table is going to locate here, so it's got to go on that way. The arrow on the top of the table is facing, is going from my body, not pointing towards my body. And we need our little silver fixing block that came off a moment ago. First thing, we get that into the groove and make sure it can slide. It only goes one way, so make sure it's the way that allows it to slide. The screwdriver fixing is on the outside, making sure I can get my screwdriver in there. And then I simply offer this up to the machine and find the groove in the bottom of the saw table, like so. Might need to just move my tool post from the last operation. Sorry, we don't need that, so that can come off. There we go. Both the saw and its little silver block fixture are sliding freely. So we get our saw table, so it's moving along the groove in our base block with its little fixture in there. We offer it up to the cam fixture. I've, I'm gripping the saw in one hand because as I'm moving that up and down, it's going to find its own location in the cam fixture. If I get to there, it hits it and doesn't go any further. But when I move that and at the same time, I'm rotating this uh, shaft on the outside of the, of the machine. It's a combination of doing both until it jumps forward. It just jumps that last section forward because then we know it's located home. Fix our saw table in place with our hexagon screwdriver. Make sure that's nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. Try it with the power. And it's ready to use. So if I have my two uh, shakers side by side, I take my ruler and I get a rough idea of the distance that they both take up. I'm going to leave a gap between them both, so I've separated them apart. And you can use that just to, with your ruler to take some uh, sort of, you know, initial measurements. So I've done this on this one I've made already. I'm going to tell you those measurements if you want to use them. So first of all, I'm going to need a base piece, nine centimeters by four and a half nine centimeters by four and a half now straight away we we realize that our wood has got these parallel sides on here so we want to make use of those by marking nine from the side and nine from the side again and as i join those up i get a piece that is nine long four and a half wide just check I got that right. Yes, four and a half wide. So I'm going to go four and a half and another little four and a half. And I know when I mark that little rectangle on there that that is also nice and parallel. So I'm going to go along and do this piece by piece. I'm going to start with the base, hands together as close to the blade as we can, pushing down, forward and slowly. After we've cut our pieces, you might just want to take your sandpaper and remove that initial sort of rough edge that we get on there from cutting. So my base piece is done. I'm just going to have a check that they both sit on there. Don't go over the edge, that's fine. And now I'm going to build the box around it. So the base is done. I'm going to need two sides, two end sides, which are five by four and a half, five by four and a half. Now I already had a four and a half marked out on there, so I'm gonna carry up, whoops, I'm gonna carry on with that one, mark another four and a half here, 
and another four and a half down here and I'm going to cut off the, continue uh, the line that that makes and cut off that long strip and each of my two ends were five each so along that line I'm going to go five and then I'm going to go ten just down here I'm just going to mark a quick five and another ten and when I join those up I can clearly see the two sides I need the two end pieces sorry that I need to cut there's one and there is the other cut those now left and right end pieces a couple more to go so these are going to fix onto there like so they're going to go on the outside one there and one on the other end so you can see we're making up a little kit of parts here base two end pieces front we're going to go nine and a half, four and a half. So we're repeating that four and a half measurement as well. And you will have enough on this part to do your nine and a half. So nine and a half is there and nine and a half is there. Just cut that little piece off and we have the piece that's going to make our front. So we'll be able to get the whole stand out of one sheet, which is quite economical. Of course, this all depends on how big you choose to make yours, but I wouldn't say you need it much bigger than this sample piece we're working on here. So we have front, base, two ends. Let's position this all out. Uh, we have a partition in the middle. So the partition is going to keep, obviously keep them apart. And our little partition is going to be again four and a half. The height you can make it anything below uh, five. Sorry, anything below four and a half. Quickly cut this out. This is our middle. Now with all of our projects that you might want to do some colouring on, it's important that you don't assemble your pieces yet. I'm going to do a plain version, but if there's really any artwork you want to do on this, any, any colouring of any description, it's far easier to do that before all the pieces go together. Okay, so you might want to mark a pen, some coloured pencil, do a design, um, get it all decorated before you glue it together. I'm not. So I'm ready to put this on now. So with our hot glue gun, which is an adult supervised piece of equipment, a hot bead of glue down the partition first. I'm going to put my part partition together like so. I'm just going to stand that in the middle. I'm going to use the salt and pepper to guide me. You can, of course, use a ruler, measure it accurately, but I'm happy with that making sure it's 90 degrees as I look down. Don't worry about the excess glue. We can pick that off in a moment. So I've got the base with the partition on. I'm going to go ahead and put the front on there now. And that just overhangs slightly at the side to accept the two end pieces. So on here, I'm going to take this T section that I've created and put a bead of glue along the two surfaces of that T, place it down offer the front part up to it and push it in like so it's going to go in there yep that's looking good 
two side parts are going to go on now and that just leaves the back to do which we're going to come to in a moment okay so they're going to go on line of glue along the bottom line of glue along the front edge that one goes on there checking as I go that this is still going to fit yes it does line of glue along the bottom and a line of glue along the front edge goes on there like so hold it 90 degrees pick off all the dry glue at the end don't do it immediately because you'll find that's a little bit warm pick off any excess you don't want like so so now i'm ready for the back section now the height and the design of this is entirely up to you i'm just going to do a simple oval and i'm going to cut out that heart shape so this has to fit between the two sides that we've just put on so again with our ruler we're going there and that is nine centimeters i know the the width is nine i'm going to go for 15 at the back so nine by 15 don't have enough on that area there so i'm going to go up the other end and i'm going to measure nine let's get the let's get the width right first a nine and a nine join those up make as much use as possible out of these straight sides to guide you and the length of my back piece you can decide on your own the length of mine was 15 so that is 15 and there's another one there join those two up quickly cut out my back section before i go any further i'm going to measure halfway along that nine distance which is four and a half i figured i may be in need of a center line in a moment for the what's going to be the center of my heart shape i'm going to cut this out first Again, taking off the rough edges created by our saw. Checking that that goes in there. I guess it does a little tight. Let's try the other end. That's better. That goes in like so. And now for the shape on the top, I could use something, uh, a roll of tape or something to give me a um sort of equidistant curve i can go ahead i'll show you uh i'll show you a trick actually if you do this and just draw half of an arc if i cut that one out If I use that piece of wood and flip it to the other side, I can get the same mark here, which I know is going to be symmetrical. So I take it, turn it over, line it up with the space, the place where it's just come out of, take my pencil, draw the inside of that, and I've got a symmetrical arc shape. We can see now why it was wise to uh, to mark that center line on. I've used it once already to find the center of that arc, but now I'm going to use it again for the center of the heart shape. It can be a, a symmetrical heart shape, same both sides, or an irregular, irregular one. So I'm just going to draw that on by hand like so. And this is what we call an internal cut. 
The first thing with an internal cut is we need to make a hole with our wood turning tool. Anywhere in the heart shape will do. I'm pushing and twisting and pushing and twisting. I can do some of this down on my table. The most important thing is you don't have your fingers at the back as you're doing this for risk of injury. Push and twist and push and twist and in no time at all, I've made a hole. That hole then slips over the blade and we're ready to cut out our heart shape. Heart shape done, just a sanding of those rough edges. I can then clean off the center line I was using earlier. The lines can be also erased using a, a pencil eraser, it doesn't have to be sandpaper. And if you then wanted to do some decoration on the back here, you'd do so before we fix it on. I've gone ahead and cut out two little letters there, an S and a P. I printed those off uh, onto paper from my computer, first of all, stuck them down on the wood and simply cut round them. I'm not gonna do that on this one, I'm just gonna fix the back on like so. So we've got our back. I'm just gonna put a line of glue on the area where it's gonna touch. It's gonna touch the center. It's gonna touch the base. And it's just going to touch the inside of the left and right side. Side. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to offer it up. And I'm going to push that into place. Like so. So I've got my back on there. My salt and pepper still fit. Yeah. A little bit of rattling room is always good you don't want someone to reach for that and drag the whole stand with them so we want them to be convenient uh, and nice and loose to, to, to go in and out without getting stuck one more thing we're going to do you've fitted your drill bit uh, from the bits in your home study kit you've figured out that you need a smaller collet for the drill bit, your motor has come off its base. It's a free uh, handheld drill now, not for children's use, for adults use only. You're going to use that to put a couple more holes in one of your pieces to form the pepper. So very quickly with that, we're just gonna mark sort of 12, four and eight o'clock on there, three different points. We're gonna attach this um, you guys will be able to just keep the same attachment. For me, I'm just going to have to hook this into my power supply like so. Same on off switch. There it is. And we're just going to keep this nice and vertical. Down into one. Down into the other. And then the last one. Like so, you filled with your salt and pepper, you popped on your little filling cap, uh, the little plastic cap at the end, and there you have it. Your salt and pepper shakers, wood turned on our lathe, and their stand that goes with them, cut out on our jigsaw. So I hope you enjoyed our latest Studio Lab tutorial, our salt and pepper shakers with the uh, stand to go with them. You can find all the details in the description below. You can visit us here at our centre, Times Square, first floor, Shakeside Road, or take advantage of our home study pack. We'll give you all of this to do these projects at home with all the necessary materials in the comfort of your own house. See you next time.